Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and it is tutorial time again. In this tutorial we're going to create this scene here. You see we have this particle globe here and all these lines moving around it and all the particles here floating around creating a really complex and nice looking hot effect and we're going to use After Effects and the Stardust plugin. If you do not have the Stardust plugin yet, you can get it from superluminal.tv and there is also a free trial version available. So let's jump right into After Effects and get started. In After Effects, first of all, I will create a new composition and I will take the HDTV 25 preset and I will make the composition 20 seconds for now and I will name it my main comp. Okay, and now I will create a new layer by pressing Ctrl Y on my keyboard and I will call this Stardust. And let's apply the Stardust effect here. So I already typed in Stardust and apply it to our layer. If you're not familiar with Stardust, Stardust is a particle system and it is a node based particle system. So this is pretty revolutionary for After Effects. And you will see throughout this tutorial what advantages you have with a node-based particle system in After Effects. So first of all, you realize that Stardust will open up a new additional window here. And I will reorganize my windows a bit to have a little bit more room to work here. So I will shift my effect controls panel over here and then just line these up like so. This should do. First of all, what I want to do is I want to create a particle grid. To create a grid, I will select my emitter and then change the emitter type in my effect controls panel here from point to grid. Now it will emit particles from a grid, but I do not want my particles to fly around. I want them to create a static grid. So I will change the speed here from 100 to 0. And now I want to change the size of my particle grid. So I will change the size in X to 1000 size in Y to 500 and size in C to 1000 as well. And to make this a little bit more obvious what we have here, I will add a camera. So let's create a new layer and let's add a new camera, make it a 20 millimeter preset camera. And then let's add another layer. And now I want to create a new null object and I will just use this to control the angle of my camera. So let's make this a 3D layer. Let's link my camera to this null call this cam control and let's also colorize these two just to make these a little bit more obvious that these are connected. Now when I reveal the rotation properties in my cam control I can now rotate through my grid here and you see what we have got. I also want to change the particle amounts of my grid so I go back to my emitter here and then I will apply under the grid properties. I want to apply 10 particles in X, five particles in Y and 10 particles in C. We can change these later on if we need, but for now, this is exactly what I want. Now we want to turn these simple particle dots here into a nice looking grid setup. To do this, we have to use one of the effects. You can access all the effects in Stardust right here. You see you have all these symbols here and each of these symbols will add a new node to our system and we need a replica node. So let's click on this symbol here and you see now we get this replica node. If I link this up now, nothing happens because we have to import a few settings here. What the replica node does is it replicates the particle system as it is in the standard settings. For example, if I put in here 10, replicates and then offset these in X, you see that we get just replicates that are offsetting in a certain direction, which is already pretty cool. But to create our corner setup, there is a special replicate type. So let's choose instead of offset corners, and then we choose replicate values of 40 and we put in an offset value of 15. 
And now you see what's happening. Now we have a really crazy looking setup. And this is because I have to turn down my particle size. So let's choose our particle node. And then let's open up the particle properties and change the size here from 3 to a very small amount like 0 0.3, something like that. Because I actually want to have really fine grid lines. And now if I zoom in here a bit, you see that it's not really a line. And this is because we have not enough density. So let's go to our replica setting and let's increase the density to a value of about 800. And now you see we have this really nice looking grid system. But for my purpose, this grid system is still a little bit too complex. There are too many corners in here. And I have a setting down here, which is called corners properties. And here I can define a max number of corners. So if I turn this down to two, you see that now our grid is not that complex anymore. There are not that many corners. If you want to have something more complicated, you can of course come in here and always add to this. You will see that the more corners you add in, the more complex the grid system gets. But for me, a value of two is fine. Okay, so far so good. Now we have a really cool looking grid and we can also colorize this very easy. So let's do that quickly. I just select my particles and instead of this solid color, I will apply a random color from gradient and then I can open up color gradient and choose one of the many presets that come with Stardust. And just for now, I will select this preset. That's pretty cool. And then apply it. And you see now our grid is a little bit colorized. Okay, so far so good. What I have to do now is see that after two seconds now my particle grid disappears and this is because the particle life is set to two seconds and I want to increase this to 20 seconds that they stay visible for the duration of our composition. And one more thing I want to change in my emitter settings. I do not want to emit default. This would emit 100 particles per second. I want to emit once. So change this from emitting default to emitting once. Now it will emit one time and then the particles will be visible throughout the whole composition. Now it's time to add a few more particles to my system. To add new particles, I simply click on this symbol here, which says particles. And now I get a new particle node. Now let's link this node to our emitter and let's select this particle system and also change the lifespan to 20 seconds. And then you see we have another set of particles and this set of particles is now aligned with our emitter grid. I will quickly rename these nodes because otherwise it will get a little bit confusing. So let's rename this. We can leave the emitter as emitter. I will call the first particle node corner particles, not grid, corner particles. And this is my corner replica. So let's type in corner, corners replica, just that I know what is what. And I want to call these particles here my circles. So these will be just circles. And I want to change the properties a little bit. So for the circles, let's add a random size here of 100, let's say. And let's turn down the overall size to something like 5 or even a bit further. We can do this later on. For now, I will turn this down a bit. Maybe the variation is not that big, around 50 and 5. This looks pretty good for me now. Now let's add in another particle node. So let's add a new particle node, drag it in here and link it to our emitter. And these particles will be rectangles. So let's rename this to rectangles. And instead of circles, I want the particle shape to be a rectangle here. And the rectangles should have a size of 12 in X and 6 in Y. So let's change the size here. And I also want to apply a random size of 100. And just for now, I will turn off my circles. So I will just select the node and then turn it off here in the effect controls panel that I see what my rectangles are doing. So let's select the rectangles again. And let's lower the opacity here a bit so that they are not that opaque, like so. And actually, we can also change the transfer mode. We should do that for all our particles. Let's select the corner particle and select the transfer mode of add. And we can do the same here for our rectangles. Because this will look a little bit cooler, a little bit more like a hot setup. 
And now I want to add numbers to each of these rectangles. To do that, I will simply duplicate my rectangle node. And to duplicate a node, I can come in here to the Effect Controls panel, press Ctrl and D on my keyboard, of course, with the node selected. And then you see it will create a replicate or a duplicate. And now we'll just change it. And I will change the name here to Numbers. Let's line this up a little bit better here, like so. Bring this a bit closer together. So you already see the advantage of this node system. So you can use one emitter and with this one emitter you can create multiple kind of different particles referring to this one emitter. And of course if I come in here now and change the emitter properties this will have an influence of all our particles here. So with our particle node selected I will now change my shape type from rectangle to texture. So I want to use a texture for this particle setup. And by the way, I forgot to increase the lifespan here to 20. So let's do this quickly. The rectangles and the numbers as well. The other settings are exactly the same because I created a duplicate of the rectangle. So this should work fine. But what I have to do now is I have to create a texture for our numbers. Therefore, I will create a new composition and I want to make this 200 pixels wide and 100 pixels high. I will name this numbers. And let's make it two seconds long and click OK. Within this new composition, I will create a new text layer. So let's add a new text layer. And then I will use a font that is called Arvo. I don't know if you have it not installed, maybe you can find it or you can of course use any font that you like. Make it a little bit smaller. And as a text I will use an expression to create random numbers throughout the whole composition. So I will open up my layer here and I will open up my text source, hold down Alt and click the stopwatch. And let's type in an expression that's called random parentheses. We want random numbers between 10 and 99. And we want these to be fixed, so to fixed, and print this again, two. And what this does is it creates random numbers for each frame between 10 and 99, and they only have two numbers behind the comma. And this is exactly what I want. So let's align these quickly. Select my thing here and my align window. I align these in the middle. And I think that this looks pretty good. Now let's go back to our main composition. And from the project window, I drag in my numbers. Let me close my Stardust layer for now and drag in the numbers just to the bottom of my comp and make this invisible. Now let's select Stardust again, go to our Effect Controls panel and with the Numbers node selected, I will come down here and there is this Texture tab. And in the Texture tab, I can now specify a texture for my particles. So let's select the layer numbers here and also for the dark side here so that we can see the numbers on both sides of our particles. And instead of current time, I want to change the sample to random still frame. And if we take a really close look, you see uh, we see already something here. It's a little bit too small for now. So let's come into our particle properties here. And let's increase the size maybe to, let's see how far we can go here. Not too much, a little bit. So maybe 14. Looks quite good. And now we have, I will deactivate the rectangles for a moment. Now we have these numbers on each of our points in the grid. And I will change the opacity of these to 100. That they're a bit more obvious. Now you can see them a bit better. Okay, so let's activate our rectangles again. The next step will be to add a little bit of motion into our system here. So to add a little bit of motion, I can use another effect. And this effect is called turbulence. And if I click this waves icon here, then I get a turbulence node. In this case now, I want to animate my numbers and my rectangles together. So these two should have exactly the same motion. And I can do this by just linking these two nodes to my turbulence node. Now this turbulence node will affect both of these particles here. Let's select the turbulence node and let's call it 
numbers animation. And what the turbulence node does is it applies a turbulence to our particle system. So if I just change the position offset for now, you will see what this does. It will just, uh, yeah, scatter or distribute our particles in 3D space. Uh, and of course, using a turbulence or noise effect. But I do not want these to scatter through our 3D space. I mean, it looks cool, but I want to keep a little bit of the grid system here. So instead of choosing uh, the turbulence type of normal, I will choose the turbulence type of axis. And now you see what will happen. If I now change the offset, you see that the offset is limited to a certain axis. And in this case, I want the axis to be our Y axis. So let's change the axis here from X to Y. And now these will only move up and down. And this is exactly what I want. So let's put in an offset value of about, let's see how far we should go, maybe 750 here. And now they are, of course, not moving. I also want to add a little bit of motion to these. And to create a bit of motion, I can use the fractal speed here. And we do not want to increase this too much. So maybe, let's see, a value of 2 or 3. I will import a value of 3 now and create a quick RAM preview to see what's going on. And now you see that they are animating uh, moving nicely, not too fast. And I think this is pretty cool. Okay, perfect. Now let's select our circles and let's activate them again. And I also want to animate these. And when I look at this now, I see that they are way too big. So let's turn the size down to something like three, maybe four, like so. And then I will just reduce the opacity a bit. And I will set the transfer mode to add. Actually, let's see. Yeah, the others are set to add. Perfect. Okay, so back to our circles. I also want to animate the circles. And to animate the circles, I will again use a turbulence node. I can simply select this turbulence node and create a duplicate. So select it, Control D to create a duplicate and name it, not numbers, but circles animation. And now we just drag this over here and link it up to our circles particle system. And now we will change the axis type from Y to X and then our spheres will move along the X axis. And you see that we created a really complex motion here with only two nodes and within a few seconds. Okay, now our basic grid system is finished and I want to make this a little bit more interesting by applying a few color maps. And we can apply color maps by using an effect called fields. You can find the fields effect here, this symbol here, these three circles. So let's click it and apply a new field effect. First of all, I want to apply a field effect to all my moving particles. So I will simply link this up with my circle animation right here and with my numbers animation right here. So this will affect everything that is linked here, all these particles now. With the field now, I will rename this and color 01 because this will be, or let's say color map 01, this may be a bit more information because this will be a color map. And to use the field as a color map, I can change the field type from sphere to map. So let's select maps here on the bottom. And you see that nothing is happening right now. But if I come down here now, and then I have to change my map to color from graph to color. And now I want to apply one of the presets. So let's select the presets here. And for this, I choose this preset. You see, we can scroll down here. There are many really cool presets included. Let's choose color preset number 16. I have to move this a bit and apply it. And now I want to change the effect. So it should not affect the opacity. It should affect the color of our particles. And now you see that it already affects the color of our particles. But I do not want it to be projected on the x-axis. Actually, I want it to be projected on the y-axis. So I will choose this from apply to y. And I will choose also project to y. And this should work and you see that it does. What I want to do now is I want to modify this preset a bit because I do not want these dark particles in here. So I will just grab this and drag it out. 
And now I will just even out the distance between these four colors. And you see what I've got now. In the bottom or on the bottom here, my particles are white and then they are yellow, like this turkey's color, and then they are red. And this is exactly what I want. And you see that this adds a lot to the look of our grid system. Okay, so now it's time to add our earth. To add the earth, we will use a preset. Stardust comes with a lot of presets. To enter the presets, you just open up this first tab here, the Stardust tab, and then click on Browse Presets on one of these icons. And here I want to open up the hard folder. And you see that we have really, really cool presets here that you can use as starting points for your projects. And in my case, I want to use this earth here. So let's add this to our scene. You could choose to replace, but don't do that because then it will replace everything that we created so far. So just choose to add this element to our scene. And then Stardust will add this earth globe here. And you will see that inside our node tree, we have a new node tree added here. So I will just replace this a little bit better. And you can also take a look at these structures, how these are built. So this can be also a very good resource for learning Stardust. Um, what I want to do now is I want to change this a little bit so that it blends in a little bit better in our setup here. So the first step with our earth is to change the color so that it blends in a little bit better into our scene. And to do that, I want to add a new field node. If we take a look here, we have one field node already applied. And if we select this and then come to my effect controls panel and deactivate it, you see what it is. And it is actually also a map and it is a, a map that is featuring the information of the image that got applied to our scene. If I move up here, you see that we have a PNG here. And this is actually the map that is controlling the birth of our particles. But what I want to add now is another field that will control the coloring of our particles. So let's select our three nodes here, drag them down a little bit, and I will just disconnect them for now by clicking on the connection here. And now I want to add a new field node, put it in here. Maybe I should rename this also to know what this is. So this is the particle map. And the next field node will be the color map. I could also add earth here that we know what we're working on the earth color map. So let's link these up again that our chain is closed again. And with our earth color node selected, I will just change the field type here to map. And then I will use color. I will effect or affect the color. And I will choose a preset and I will use the same preset that I used for our grid. So this is preset number, which number is it? 14 and apply it. And now I could choose which axes I want to project this to. So maybe we use the C axis for now. Let's take a look how this looks like. And um, yeah, I think this looks pretty good. So let's choose this one. And I also think that my earth is a little bit too big. And you see that we have these two transform nodes here. And what they are doing is they're actually rotating our globe. So if I create a quick RAM preview, and I will set this to half now because it renders faster. Let's create a quick RAM preview. You see that the earth is building up and it is rotating slightly which is pretty cool. And I can also use these transform nodes to change the size. So let's just select the last transform node here. Let's take a look what this does. And actually it doesn't do too much. It just changes the rotation a bit, I think. And I could now scale it down by simply adding value of 75 here, 75 here and 75 on C. And now my earth should be a little bit smaller, which it is, okay. Let's change this back to full resolution because it looks better. Okay, so now we have our earth. Now we have our emitter and everything is ready. What I have to add now is this nice spherical field in our grid here. So to do that, we add a new field effect and we want to add this field effect right here on the bottom of my setup. Let's move over here. To, to navigate in your node tree, you can use this little rectangle here. Just click and drag. And make sure that you connect 
all these elements to this field node. So let's select this one here and connect these. Let's select this one here and connect these. And you see now through these connections, all of them are connected together. So this field will really have an influence now to all of our emitters, particles, and everything that we applied. And I want to call this spherical field. So this will be our spherical, spherical field effect. Let's come in here and you see that the field type is already set to sphere. And if we take a look here, you see already something is happening. So there is already a small sphere pushing our grid uh, outwards. And I want to increase the size here a bit. So let's go to the field properties and let's see how much we have to put in here. I think 500 will do. 500, 500 and 500. Pretty good. And um, actually this looks really nice. So for now, let's make this a little bit smaller and let's take a look what we have got here. We could add now a bit of a camera animation to make this a little bit more interesting. So let's move to our camera. Let's close up our Stardust layer. So let's search a nice camera angle. Therefore, I go to my rotation properties and my cam control null. And let's see what we can do here. Maybe something like that. It's a bit of an angle here and we could also apply a bit of an angle on the X here to make this a bit more interesting. Not too much, but a little bit like so. That looks pretty good. So I have values of five and minus, let's say 35 right here. Now I could zoom in or move in with my camera a bit. So let's see what we can do here. Like so, it looks pretty good. And we could, of course, now also add a bit of depth of field. So let's press AA here to reveal the camera properties. Let's turn on the depth of field setting. And now we can see that already Stardust is already reacting. I want to make sure that my focus distance is set right. So I want to set the focus distance right here to the edge of my sphere or to my Earth here. So let's bring the focus distance in a bit like so. Okay maybe increase the aperture a little bit to make this a little bit more intense. So let's see what this looks like. I think this looks pretty good. What I do not like is that my grid is really very, very um, visible. So I do not want it to be that visible. What I can do here is I can come to my Stardust setup and select my corners and maybe reduce the opacity here a bit. Let's see. I think this looks a little bit better. So set this to 60%. Okay, so I really, really like this. Really looks nice. So there's one more thing that disturbs me. And I think that the sphere or the circle particles are actually, they are a little bit too big and there are too many of them. So what I can do here is I select my circles node and then come to my effect controls panel. And first of all, I will change the size to three that they are a little bit smaller. And now I can change the birth chance here. You see I have a birth, a birth chance here of 100. And if I set this to 50, then we immediately reduce the amount of circles. And this is cool. I think this is looking way better because it's not so crowded then. And yeah, I think this really, really looks nice. Now we will create a very quick build-up animation for our setup. And this is really easy as well. So first of all, I want to animate in our corners. If we select our corners node and then we come to animation properties or animate properties, it's called. Here you see we have these graphs here and I can change these graphs and control the animation of the replicate. So if I set this here to zero and this is always over the whole lifespan. So you see that now they would animate on over a time of 20 seconds because we put in 20 seconds to, for the lifespan of our particles here. We do not want this, of course, because this is taking way too long. So we do not want these to build up through 20 seconds for our whole animation. We do want them to build up quite quick. So let's select our corners replica. And instead of using this linear setup here, I can use a preset as well. So let's click on presets and you see we have a wide range of really cool presets. And let's choose the fade in Bezier here, this one, and let's apply it. 
And this will have the effect that our grid, let's create a quick RAM preview again with half resolution, that our grid will animate on in the beginning and I'm not sure here, probably within the first few seconds. I think that it is, I think that the speed of the build up is quite nice. So let's leave it on the default. I could of course come in here and change this a bit, you know, make it a bit slower to build up or even make it a bit faster, like so. I think this is okay. And now I have a nice build-up animation for my grid. I also want to add a build-up animation for all the particles that are flowing around here in the air. So to do that, I have to add another effector. And actually I want to use another field. So let's take our spherical field here, move it down a bit. And let's add in a new field effect or a field node. And let's put this in, we could put it in before the color map. We can also put it in afterwards, doesn't really matter. So let's just clean or clear this connection and reconnect these again here. So I just put it behind or, or beneath my color map, but before my spherical field here. And I can call this field here build up. And I can actually, if you are familiar with Cinema 4D, you have MoGraph and MoGraph has these effectors that you can use to manipulate the, the clones. And it's very, very similar. The, the field effect is very similar to this. You can use this actually as an effector like in MoGraph. So let's change the field type to box. And now I can choose what I want to effect. So here there are the effected properties that I can choose and I do not want to change the position so I will set this to zero. I want to affect the size and actually I want to be everything inside this box, inside this box field to be zero size, so to be not visible. So I set this size here to zero. Then let's open up the field properties. I do not want this field to be feathered, at least not for now, so let's change this for to a value of zero. And now let's increase the size of our field. And you will see the more I increase the size here, the more particles will disappear. So let's increase the size here to something like, I'm not sure, 2000 for now. Then in Y we may need 1000. And in C we need, actually we could, yeah, let's, let's type in 2000 as well. Let's see whether this clears all the particles. Yes, it does. So now all our particles are within our box and that's why they are not visible because they have a size of zero now. But what I can do now is I can animate the position of my box to create a build-up effect. So let's do that. Let's choose our frame number zero. Let's create a position keyframe for our origin here. And let's move forward maybe for three seconds. Let's say that the build-up should last about three seconds. And now we just move our effector here on the x-axis. So let's see how far we have to move it until our particles start to appear. And you see now they are already appearing, so I have to move it quite far. Let's move it on until all of them are revealed. Uh, even a bit further, so maybe I think 4000 should do. So we can type in here 4000. Let's take a look by pressing U to reveal all the keyframes. Let's just make these a quick easy ease keyframes here. Actually, I think I made a mistake here. I, I have to put in 4000 here and not 400. So let's again put the cursor here. Let's enter 4000 this time. And now we can take a look at this build up. So I will just, let me create a quick run preview. So what I don't like about this now is it starts very late and then it builds up too fast. So let's come into our build up and let's change the feathering here. So I want to apply a bit of a feathering here. So let's put in 50 here maybe because then it will be a bit smoother. So let's take a look and it still starts very, very late. So I will change the size of our box here a bit. Maybe this is a little bit too big. So let's set it to 1500. Let's see what this does. And let's set this to 1500 as well. 
maybe even reduce this further 1200 okay so you see now something is happening in the beginning nothing is visible and then it slowly starts to build up right straight from the beginning this is exactly what i want so i think this is way better and then i probably also can change the position here a bit to maybe something like let's see maybe something like 3000 and still everything is visible or even 2000 is enough let's see no that's not enough 2500 yeah i think that this is okay and now i just made this a little bit more smooth so it starts from the beginning and will build up smoother throughout our animation so let's take a quick ram preview and you see now the build up is working quite well so it's very smooth everything is coming together quite nicely so to make this even more interesting you could now of course choose a new camera angle you know maybe something like this to improve the look of this scene let me change back to full resolution quickly we could add a little bit of glow for example so let's do that quickly i will add an adjustment layer and on this adjustment layer let's call it glow i will add a glow effect and with this glow effect in the standard settings it really doesn't look good so i would recommend to increase the glow radius to something about 200 so that it is really really a big glow and maybe decrease the intensity to 0 0.3 depending on how intense it should be or 0 0.5 i think this looks better and now you see if i deactivate this definitely adds to the look of our scene you could of course also add a background so let's do that add a new solid call it bg and then drag it on top or on the bottom i should say of my composition add a four color gradient to this with four colors so the first one will be maybe bluish tint here okay second one black third one black and this one bluish tint too now let's make this bit darker like so this one as well can change this a bit to something like so maybe and then in the end we could apply a new adjustment layer and just bring it on top and add a new color correction and there's a really cool thing that is called lumetri color which is quite new in After Effects and I really like it. You can do really, really cool things with this. And there you can choose a creative look setup. And let's choose maybe which one was it which I used here. I think it was SL Clean Fuji C. So if I apply this, you see immediately we get a different look, but I think it looks really cool. And then we can, of course, change the curves maybe to brighten this up a bit. And we could also increase the saturation by just pulling this out a bit. Like so, looks quite nice. And in this case, I maybe would change the background a bit because it doesn't look that good actually. So let's change this back to blue. Looks a little bit better. Blend them a bit more maybe. Make this one maybe a bit darker. Like so okay and i think it looks not too bad okay so let's take a look at the result of our tutorial i think that is really cool it looks nice and a very complex setup and we actually only used one layer of particles so you see how powerful stardust really is so let me invite you to visit my website which is www.graphicinmotion.com there you can find all my after effects templates you can find a lot of useful stuff like tutorials i also have a few free templates so check out my website thank you very much for watching and i really hope to see you soon goodbye